A little bit of bubbly. Let's do this. Let's get into it. Today, we are looking into probably the best film emulation plugin that's now available for Final Cut Pro. I will say after getting the plugin into Final Cut and seeing all the tools at a glance, I was slightly overwhelmed at first, but after spending some time playing around with them and taking the time to learn, I can confidently say that this plugin is awesome and I'm really excited to be sharing it with you guys. So I'm gonna give you guys a really good overview and run through all the tools and options and kind of give you my input and experience on how they work. I would like you guys to know that aside from this pro version that I've been testing out, Dehancer does offer a light version, some individual options. So if you wanna save some costs in certain areas, then you can definitely do that when you check out their website. I give you guys an exclusive 10% off using my promo code that is dropped down below. So if you use that with any of their download purchase options, you'll get 10% off. In return, I'm able to get a small commission, which is just going to help me reinvest into spending more time making content. So thank you so much for any support and using that code. Now, let's dive into it. I've got my computer open here. I'm gonna pull up Final Cut Pro. I have a few clips that I shot recently when my family and I went to the Toledo Zoo. I'm gonna stop on this because I think this is just a really good image. Plus there's a cute little baby. Let's start with this image and let me show you how this looks and feels. Okay, so starting off, you go into the effects browser, you're gonna scroll down to where it says film emulation. That's where you're gonna see the Dehancer Pro plugin. Okay, then you can pull that over on any clip. You could throw that on an adjustment layer. So Dehancer Pro is gonna start with Rec 709 to begin with. I recommend that you choose your camera. They have a list of cameras here for me. It's Sony FX3, and I shot an S-Log3 Gamma Dot Cine ISO 640. That's what I shot all these clips in. So here you have these sliders. Here's your exposure, temperature, tint, defringe. Defringe is when there's like chromatic aberrations and you might get some discoloration around the outside of an object or something like that. But anyway, you can enable defringe and play with it if you have some areas like that that you need to attend to. But anyway, this basically adjusts your, your white balance with your temperature and tint and then your overall exposure of your image. So next up we got the film section. So this is where Dehancer has 63 different film stocks to choose from. So you can look up online, your popular Hollywood movies, whatever you're into, what vibe you're going for. For me in this one specifically, I like the Kodak Vision 3 200T. I thought that looked really good in these clips. However, I have messed with several other ones and there's a lot of really good stuff to start with. So this is just a good starting point of what film stock you wanna use this push and pull meter you can kind of think of that as your temperature gauge on your image so you can see how the color changes when I'm sliding it to the left as well as to the right you can toggle that on or off and kind of see how that's affecting your image so I'm gonna hit command Z and just put it back to how I had it before next is film developer so these sliders help with making further adjustments to contrast and color correction um, for me I just like to play around with them. You can see I messed with the color separation, the color boost, the gamma correction. If I toggle this off, I, that's what I had before. If I toggle it back on, you can see it's a little bit nicer. You just gotta play with the sliders. Don't be afraid of it, get into it. Film compression. This is one of my favorite tools. Um, I'm sad to say it's only available in the pro version, which is the full package. It's the they have different versions you can choose from when you're on Dehancer's site. We'll jump into that in a bit, but film compression's awesome because what it does, I'll just show you. When I toggle it off, you can see how I've got these this bright window behind the baby and mom. When I enable this, it compresses those highlights down into the midtones. Or if you're working with a camera that might not have the best dynamic range, this is a tool that can save your butt, I think. So you've got your entire impact white point, your tonal range, okay, your color density. The next one is expand. This is where you can control not losing information in the brightest point or the darkest point. Hence the black point, white point you see on here. Color mode will allow you to either choose Luma or normal. To my knowledge, Luma, when you make these adjustments, is just affecting the highlights or the shadows, whereas normal, when you play with these, is also going to affect that along with your color. Leave a comment if I'm wrong, but that's what I've found, okay? Disable, enable, much better. Print, so print, you can think of print is like the LUT 
of your film stock. So profile, I've been using Kodak 2383 print film or I've been using this glossy paper one. In this specific clip, I really like 2383, but just to show you, I wonder if this would be a better example. Ooh, this one I'm using glossy paper on, so see? See how different it is? The print film does not look as good as the end result with the glossy paper on this one. So it's another one of those situations where it's really gonna depend on what kind of look you like. But anyway, within this section, you have tons tons of control over how you want your final print to look. And again, all of them have the enable, disable toggle so you can see how it's affecting your image overall. Color head. In technical terms, this is a subtractive color correction tool with exposure compensation. So this is just another way to really control the color of your final print. This is another one of those where you can be as subtle or as extreme as you feel you need to be. Anyway, going down to film grain, the serious stuff. So this is obviously one of the biggest features for the film emulation plugin. This is the meat and potatoes here, kind of in a way, maybe. So in here you can adjust the size of the grain, the amount, the film resolution, shadows, midtones, highlights. You can make all these adjustments. There's so much level of control with the film grain, but it automatically, algorithmically, integrates itself into your image so it's not working like an overlay and this is part of what makes this plugin a premium option because of the way it works with the characteristics and color it's it's quite incredible they really put a lot of work into making this special so i think you'll really like it it's very labor intensive on your gpu so this is not going to just be easy to play back i find i i like kind of zooming in i would make different adjustments on the image, maybe play back small snippets, and then I would just disable it until you're ready to do the export. So that's the way I would go about it. But lots of control here. I'm gonna change that to positive. You can see how much softer of a grain that is. So again, that's, that's just my preference. You're free to do whatever you want. Halation, this is another very distinguishing factor of something that was shot on film, which halation, ultimately kind of gives that reddish glow around objects. So if I were to take this off, you can see the color change here than when I enable it. And I don't know if this is the best image for that. Um, let me try one outside here, see how it looks. So yeah, you can, you can kind of see that subtle red glow around the area. Anyway, like everything else, this has a lot of level of control. Again, to me, the more subtle, the better, but you can be as extreme with it as you want. Bloom, this is another fan favorite feature because this alone makes up for a lot of the value of the plugin. I mean, you could spend 80 to $100 on a pro mist filter. That's usually what I, what I would have on my camera to make something bloom behind me. But just to give you an even cooler example, I will make sure to overlay some B-roll here of me talking and I will apply this bloom effect and you can see that it can almost replace that filter if you're in a situation where you weren't able to use it or you didn't get to. You can adjust the details, the diffusion level, the, the highlights, you can go through these sliders and kind of get it the way you like. So if I toggle it off, you can see the image will drastically change versus when I have it on. In this clip, it kind of almost gives it this like memory effect, which I really like. That's really cool and interesting. Uh, hand in hand with that is vignette for that kind of memory feel. Like if I were to take off the vignette, which you know creates the kind of the dark darkening around your image. So I find it best if you start with the feather at nothing and you can just kind of slow Slowly work your way into the exact look that you are going for. All right, next up is film breath. So, <laughs> gate weave is like the physical movement from the film actually rolling through a projector. What this can do is create can enable almost like a very subtle subconscious, I don't wanna say handheld effect, but something along those lines. But that's what gate weave is. Monitor, this is a free download on their site. So this is your false color IRE. So if you wanted to skip over looking at waveforms, you can click on this if you know how to read false color, which can be super helpful in monitoring your image. And then lastly, we have output, which is your total Im impact of everything that we've done to it so far. So you can bring it down to nothing. You can bring it all the way up to where we're at. 
And then lastly, my favorite thing here is the LUT generator. You can export your look as a LUT, can save it. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you save it in the right place. Go to your finder, correct me if I'm wrong for any of you, option, library, application support, type in LUT. Okay, somewhere up here I have a custom LUTs folder. So this is where you want to you want to put your LUTs in cut in here so that way they correctly show up when you go into your effects browser. Custom LUT, you throw that on your image and you go in here and then as long as you export your LUT in that custom LUTs folder, they should show up in here so you can see that I have my Dehancer LUTs which I saved my Toledo Zoo one from the other day. You can also save an effects preset so that way it'll show up in your color grading presets and then you can just apply those to your clips. So quickly, I'm gonna go into the website. Here's Dehancer Pro. For me, I'm gonna to go to video, click on Final Cut Pro. Here's the Pro version that shows you all of those tools we just ran through. It is quite an expensive plugin, but again, there's a lot about it that I think does kind of offset the cost between the film compression, the bloom, the film grain that integrates itself into all the characteristics of your image. Like there's a lot that's gone into this plugin. Like everybody else says, I would like to see it be a little bit less expensive, but again, it's a premium plugin. Some people suggest this light version. However, I would say that this might be one of those, depending on what you're looking for, maybe you just want the bloom, maybe you just want the film grain. Okay, so that would make sense, but it makes me think of the buy it nice or buy it twice saying, I don't wanna buy this and then regret not just spending the extra on the pro version just to have everything. The light version doesn't have the LUT generator. It doesn't have film compression, gate weave, film breath. Yeah, it just reminds me of the buy it nice or buy it twice. I don't know, if you're gonna spend that much, you might as well just get the pro version. You have everything, you can export your looks as LUTs. Uh, then it'll save you time on a lot of your color grading and your or whatever filmic look you're going for. So final thoughts, I don't think it's just for people that are trying to make a short film or any kind of film that need a specific look. I think I'm gonna use this in my YouTube video for any kind of client work. Like it's really just kind of an all-in-one complete color grade tool, film developing tool. Really impressed by it. Thumbs up to Dehancer on it. If you are gonna purchase any of these downloads, don't forget to use that promo code down below. It'll save you 10% on any of these purchases. I hope this video was really helpful for you guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more video creation, tutorial, gear, anything in the video world that I come across. I like to try to project into my channel. So. Thank you so much. Join up and we'll see you guys next time.